Being a worshiper goes beyond our songs. It goes beyond our beautiful voices. It goes beyond our ability to play with dexterity. It goes beyond the ability to interpret music correctly. Being a worshiper goes beyond the tonation we can produce. It goes beyond the kind of sound we can make. Being a worshiper goes beyond how vast we are in the genre of music. Being a worshiper is not being a singer. Being a worshiper is not being an instrumentalist or a soundist, like I love to call it, or a Levite. It goes way beyond singing and playing. The, the important ingredient for a worshiper is the heart. The heart for a worshiper is the currency with which you transact. If the heart is wrong, every other thing that comes from that individual, from that life, is wrong. If the heart is corrupt, everything that comes from that individual is corrupt. If the heart is dirty, everything that comes from that individual is dirty. The currency for a worshiper is the heart. We transact with the heart. We do business with the heart. And it is important, it is important. Like a footballer, your instrument is your body. And like the worshiper, your instrument is your life. It's not separate from you. It's not something you pick up and put down. It's a life you live is a life you carry up and down wherever you are going so it is important that you deliberately intentionally consciously keep your heart pure it is important that we are deliberate about keeping our heart pure and the truth is scripture already said it guard your heart from out of it flows all the issues of life. If you don't guard your heart, I mean the world we're living, everything can mess up your heart. Every single thing around you can mess up your heart in a failing world. So it is important that the heart is right. Scripture says in Psalm 24, it said, who will I send the heel of the Lord? He that has a pure heart. I've often said, are you saying that your heart is always pure, without any sin, without any fault? No. Most times there are things in our heart. But when the Bible says guard your heart, it means protect your heart against what will come. When they come, they will touch your heart. The job of a guard is to resist. That is your job, resist when they come, because they will come. If they stay or they go is what matters. So if you can guard your heart, it is that heart that is pure. A guarded heart is a heart that is pure. It doesn't mean that the heart is sinless, but that is guarded. Every time you find sin, you say, no, you can't stay here, get out. It is that heart that the Lord will bless with righteousness. That's what makes you righteous. A heart that is constantly going through purification is like a water system, you know, constantly being purified. That is the instrument of worship. That is how you are a worshiper. Not because you can sing, not because you can preach, or not because you can pray, but because you have a heart that is touchable, moldable and reachable so wherever you're listening to me 
for those of us here and those listening from whatever part of the world, your heart is your instrument. And anytime you come before the Lord, either to sing or to pray or to read the word or to dance or to jump, whatever it is you want to do or to bow or to lift your hands, remember that God is seeing the posture of your heart before your physical activity. It translates. I often say that it starts from the heart. It doesn't stop there. But that's where it starts. So for you listening to me, wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes and bring your heart under the authority of Jesus now. Our hearts wander. Always want to wander and go here and there. But we have to be deliberate. We have to be deliberate about making sure that we bring our heart under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. Here we are, God. Here we are, God. Here we are, God. Open arms before you. Here we are, open arms before you. Here we are, open arms before you. Our hearts are open to hear from you, to receive from you. While Jesus was on earth, he wouldn't do anything without listening to the Father. So we open our hearts to you now. And we say that you speak to our heart. Words that cannot be altered. Speak to our heart words that cannot be uttered. Speak to our heart words that cannot be uttered. That only the Spirit can communicate. Speak to our heart, Jesus. Beyond words. Spirit to spirit. Speak to our heart. Purify our heart. Revive our heart. We have come. We have come to you. We have come to you. We have come to you, Jesus. Here we are, here we are, here we are. We are here, Jesus. Without the pure heart, we cannot see you. Purify our hearts, Jesus. And they Purify our heart, Jesus. Nandi edu shite yali baronda bokosha tia. Purify our heart, Jesus. Arande kapai na noja di satai. Purify our heart, Jesus. Oh, rada bakapai ani na noja tia. Purify our heart, Jesus. We surrender to you. Ali kapai na noja di satia. We surrender to you. Purify our heart. Only the pure heart can see you. Only the pure heart can ascend the heel of the Lord. Purify our heart, Jesus. Tell him to purify your heart. Tell him to purify your heart. Elabakande satuya liradosandi alie kapaya clean our heart clean our heart Lord Jesus do a cleaning a cleansing work in our heart Jesus eradoshateya purify our heart purify our heart check our heart remove what needs to be removed put what needs to be put fix what needs to be fixed. So that whatever we say, whatever we give, can be acceptable to you, Jesus. Fix our heart. We don't want to give an offering that is going nowhere. It's a matter of the heart, and we ask you to fix it. Here is our heart. Open arms before you, Jesus. Oh, shadow of a cup, I know, Sati. Aliando 
worship only by the Spirit. Only by the Spirit. Your flesh does not want to read the Bible. It is just how it is designed. Our flesh is vain. We'll rejoice when there is a party. Our flesh will rejoice when there is a trip to Bahamas. But when it comes to the things of the Spirit, our flesh does not want it. So if we are going to be a worshiper of God, what we do daily is to bring on that subjection, our flesh, kill it every time. Apart from your heart being the instrument, for you to be a worshiper, you have to die. Flesh has to die. Completely, totally die. Every time there is still a piece of flesh, it can interrupt the spirit. No matter how small the flesh is, it can stop and interrupt and divert the spirit. And this is why we have to totally surrender. So I want you listening to me and you in this room bring your flesh under subjection. Pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, your flesh dies. You build the spirit and the flesh dies. You build the spirit and the flesh dies. You build the spirit and the flesh dies. So I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Kill the flesh so that the spirit can glorify Jesus. So that the spirit can honor Jesus. So that the spirit can lift Jesus. So that the spirit can bless Jesus. So kill your flesh by praying in the Holy Ghost. Forget about every distraction. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I need your spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost.
to be home Set apart for you, God We need to be only in and out, pure, holy, in and out, because you search the deepest things of the heart. Oh, we need to be whole. much deeper within you such much deeper within you see much deeper within you see much deeper within You search much deeper within. You search much deeper within. You search much deeper within. I can hide from everybody else. You search much deeper within. I can pretend to everybody else, but you search much deeper within. I cannot hide from you, you know the state of my heart. You know it. You see it as bright as day. You search much deeper, much deeper. I cannot fake it with you. I cannot fake it with you. I cannot fake it with you. You search much deeper within my heart. I cannot pretend with you. Even if I try, it will fail. Even if we try, it will fail because you search much deeper within. No. Oh, you see within our hearts. Jesus. You see deep within our heart. You know what is there. You know what is there. Oh, you search much deeper within. I cannot pretend from you. Jesus, you search much deeper. You see me as I am. You know me as I am. You search much deeper. my heart 
So I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it is all about you It is all about you, my Jesus I am sorry, Lord, for whatever I have made it When it is all about you When it is all about you
Except we surrender to you, it's never going to be our will. No matter how much we struggle or try, it will always fall flat to its face. You are free, God. 
You are free, God. I hear your heart. I follow your spirit. You are my master. You are my God. I hear your heart. I follow your spirit, you are my master, you are my God. I hear your voice, I follow your spirit, you are my master, you are my Lord. We hear your voice, we follow your spirit, you are our master, you are our Lord. We hear your voice, we follow your spirit, you are our master, you are our Lord. No. 
about life you don't have a choice <laughs> if it is life oh, you do not what have a choice if you're going to be a worshiper you don't have a choice but to listen to the leader you don't represent anybody you don't know how do you point people to a Jesus you do not recognize it's 
not possible. So in this matter of if it's life, you don't have a choice. But if you want death, you have a choice. You hear and you follow. Sometimes you don't even have the time to say, um, God, what are you trying to do? Just do what? Follow. Sometimes you don't have the leisure of saying, okay, God, 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 fix this my problem first. All right? When you fix it, I can then do. Sometimes you don't have the leisure. You know, sometimes the problem is in the way of what God says you should do. Has it happened to you before? God says, go and do something. And physically, you are not capable. There is a problem. And he says, go. You don't have a choice but to obey. That happened in my life. I'm not well. And yet you tell me, go and record. I'm not talking about malaria. I'm not talking about typhoid. I'm talking about not well that they could not help you here and they have to fly you for three months seeking for help in ICU. And then, rather than for my Lord to heal me, he says what? You will go to Nigeria. Who does that? Jesus. I mean, like, heal me first, then, Abby, I will go. But he says, you will go. And when you hear the voice of God, you can't miss it. And you don't have a choice. I woke up, I told my guardian or guardian that I'm going to Nigeria. And she looked like, you're yeah, not well. I know. But God said what? Go. I went. Did he heal me before going? No. I was being healed in the process of obedience. As I was doing this, I realized this is no longer there. Praise God. As I was doing that, oh, it's no longer there. Praise God. Oh, I'm walking. Oh, this is no longer there. Praise God. That's how it has been. It's a journey. I can't even tell you that oh, there are times I don't feel. But it has never stopped his voice and his word. So, you know, we are likened to the army. They say what? Obey before complain. Sometimes you want him to fix the problem first, and I'm telling you, he will not. Sometimes he won't. What you should be more concerned about is if he is there with you in that problem. Stop pushing at the mountain and he's not moving and you're saying, God, where are you? Actually, you're not even saying, God, where are you? You're saying, just push the mountain, God. And he's saying, don't worry. The mountain is building you. I am here. I am coaching you. Just stay with me. If you must be a worshiper, you listening to me, those of you here, you don't have a choice. Let me say it this way. Scripture says, they that must worship, must do what? Worship in spirit and in truth. They, you see, it's not by force. So you have chosen now to be a worshiper, Abby. Right? You chose. If you must worship, it has to be by the Spirit and by truth. The only other choice you have is to turn away. But if you're going to stay, you don't have a choice but to do what? Worship in spirit and in truth. And I'm not talking about singing. Live your life in a way that Jesus is glorified every time. 
There are times the things you want to do, they are not bad. Scripture says all things are lawful, but not all things are what necessary. They're not exactly bad, but God says don't do it. That's part of your hearing. Do you understand me? Everybody is doing it. He says, you, you, don't do it. And you're wondering, what is it? It's not bad, though. It's not a sin. But it's weaning you away from it. Because it's calling you to a place different. I was telling the guys yesterday, most times we want a name. We want position. But if we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus has a name, right? And the name is what? Above every other name. But Jesus earned the name. He didn't just want it. He what? Earned it. Did you hear me? He didn't just want it. What did he do? He earned it. The Bible says he didn't count it as a robbery. Though he was the same as God, yet he did not count it as what? Robbery to his person. He did what? Humbled himself and went through this life according to what the Father says. When he was so bad, he says, if possible, remove this cup. But nonetheless, not my will, but yours. You see the Jesus we call his name and we say, our Jesus, if he went through that path, why on earth do we think we'll walk a different path? Why do we try? Just even think about it. Why do we try to walk another path? Why do we try to walk a fast forward path? Why, would, why do we like to walk a short cut path? If our Lord and Savior did not do it. And we say we are to be what? Like him. So, after going through that process, the Bible says, therefore, God has what? Huh? Highly exalted him. And given him a name, what? Above every other name. Hear that again. God gave him a name above what? Every other name, including the name of God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. So you don't say, in the name of God, I pray. You say what? You say what? Say it. Whose name do you pray with? Is it the name of God? No. Are you praying to God? Yes. But God who does not break his word and follows process gave Jesus a name that is above every other name, including his own name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that what Jesus is Lord why did I say this simple story you want a name you want a name it's not a bad thing you want a name for yourself what do you need to do huh 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 how do you earn it following obedience you don't have a choice you don't have a say. You are not representing yourself. You are representing somebody. You listen to that person. And whatever that person says is what you do. So rather than me trying to push my name on social media and push my name through marketing, huh? What do I need to do? Huh? Stay in the place where I earn my name with God. When I earn that name with God, you cannot take that name. Whether you say one propaganda today 
or say another one tomorrow. It will not change because you didn't give me the name. God gave me the name, gave me the position, gave me the title. I wish many would hear me, many old and young, because everywhere you turn, I'm a worshiper. God is calling me to worship. I'm a worshiper. Probably they should say I'm a singer. Really. That's what you hear. I'm a worshiper. I have the anointing. I have the gift. God, you know, I know from when I was small, God told me, praise God. If truly you are called, then if Jesus did not bypass the process, you can never bypass the process. If you do, you end up somewhere. But it's not where Jesus wants you to end up. So rather than be concerned about who is following you and who is not following you, be concerned about who you are following. I'm not talking about who you are following on social media. That's also important. But be concerned about who you are following. Are you following the leading of Jesus or are you leading? We don't have another job. Our only job is to follow. He stands up, we stand up. He's sitting, we sit. He's praying, we pray. He's speaking, we speak. He's quiet, we are quiet. He's thinking, we are thinking. Do you understand it? That's how it works. So you will sing this song again. I hear your voice. I follow your leading. You are my master. You are my Lord. I don't have a say in this matter. You are my master. You are my Lord. I don't have a say in this matter. You are my master. You are my Lord. Can you sing it very quietly? Say, I hear your voice. You are. My man. 
Spirit, you are our Lord. Father, we have chosen to follow you. We don't have a choice in this matter. I speak for myself first. I do not have a choice in this matter. And I hope to speak on behalf of others. We do not have a choice in this matter. There's no point doing anything if it's not by your leading. There is no point engaging in anything if it's not by your leading. There's no point going if you're not speaking. There's no point doing if you're not speaking. Together we say that we'll follow you. We will hear you and we will follow you. You are our master. You are our Lord. You are the best master there is. You are the best Lord there is. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you. We will follow you totally and completely in the name of Jesus. We will follow your lead totally and completely in the name of Jesus. We will follow your voice totally and completely in the name of Jesus. Thank you for a yielded heart. Thank you for a heart of worship that follows you, that hears you, that obeys you and do what you want. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you for Catrail Music. Thank you because it will be said that they will follow God. They will follow Jesus. They will follow the Spirit. They will do nothing of their own accord. But as the Spirit leads, in the name of Jesus. Amen.